dancing black holes, neutron star clashes, supernovae explosions are just some of the monstrous events that took place in the distant past in deep space. Today, surprisingly, we are able to hear the echo of those events thanks to a very precious new messenger of the cosmos, gravitational waves. In order to understand what they are, when they were discovered, and what their importance is for cosmology of the future, stay with us. We will tell you everything during this video. Let's take a dip into the past. We're in 1915. Albert Einstein has recently given birth to the theory of general relativity, in which he paves the way for modern cosmology. Relativity, in addition to deeply revising the concepts of space and time, completes the law of universal gravitation proposed by Isaac Newton in 1687. Newton, in fact, had described gravity as a force at a distance, without, however, clarifying what was actually causing and transmitting it. How is it possible that two objects, far by millions of kilometers, could feel the presence of each other? Newton himself wondered, it is conceivable that brute and inanimate matter, without the mediation of something immaterial, can act and influence other matter without mutual contact, he said. In general relativity, space and time are brought together within a four-dimensional entity, formed by the three spatial dimensions plus time, space-time. Einstein reformulates and integrates Newton's gravity into a coherent framework and clarifies that it is space-time that determines gravity. It is the presence of matter that deforms the space-time, which in return, in accordance with Newton's action-reaction principle, acts on the matter itself, constraining it to move on very precise trajectories. We can imagine space-time as a sheet, a very elastic, malleable, and stress-sensitive fabric on which marbles move that we can identify as masses, celestial bodies. Einstein goes beyond and from the equations of general relativity comes to predict the existence of ripples within this sheet. When a very heavy object undergoes very sharp and intense movements, modifies the local curvature in space, producing waves similar to those left by a speedboat sailing at sea. During particular extreme events, as well as accelerated electric charges, emit radiation under forms of electromagnetic waves. Enormous accelerated masses should emit energy in the form of gravitational waves, deformations of space-time that spreads like waves. The space-time fabric thus ripples and sways like the surface of a lake, and the oscillation is transmitted and propagated at the speed of light. We've had to wait a century, but nowadays gravitational waves have been finally detected. Before now, we were only able to detect its presence indirectly. The first clue to their existence was obtained by studying the behavior of a pulsar orbiting another neutron star, a system discovered in 1974 by Joseph Taylor and Russell Hulse. Gravitational waves were detected directly for the first time on September 14, 2015, and announced to the world on February 11, 2016. The wave was produced by a catastrophic event, the collision of two black holes of mass equivalent to about 29 and 36 solar masses, which approached each other to penetrate and give rise to a new gigantic black hole of about 62 solar masses. The three solar masses missing from the total sum was expelled in the form of energy carried by gravitational waves. Imagine three whole suns vaporized in a few moments that have traveled millions of years through interstellar space and have come down to us in the form of waves. Gravitational waves have a great advantage in their journey through space-time. They interact very weakly with matter and arrive on Earth intact and genuine as they are created at the source. They are not absorbed and thus give us access to phenomena that occurred when the universe and the celestial bodies were still in formation. To push us to very remote times, dating back to the very first moments of the universe after the Big Bang, the price to pay to be able to listen to these imperceptible vagaries of the cosmos is the absolute in the detection that must be frighteningly precise and is subject to a whole series of disturbances and noise that overlap and alter the correct measurement of the signal. Any terrestrial vibration, an engine on a distant highway, a train, ocean waves miles away, produces much more relevant effects. To give an idea of what a gravitational wave produces, we can say that the oscillation following its passage 
would change the distance between two spacecraft that fly to 5 million kilometers of the distance of about a picometer, 100 million times less than the width of a human hair. Isolating the detectors from any external disturbance is a challenge to the limit of the possible. The challenge can only be overcome by combining the results of several different detectors placed in places very far from each other. At least two detectors are needed, thousands of miles apart. Only the signal detected by both of them deserves to be analyzed. The world scientific community has already begun to build a network of gravitational wave detectors, which has been gradually improved over the years and will soon be expanded. A sort of a global ear constantly listening to the imperceptible signals that come from deep space. This network today includes the two main detectors of the LIGO experiment, which are located in the United States. The Virgo detector located in Italy, in the countryside around Pisa, Geo 600 which operates in Germany near Hanover, and Kagra, Kamakoka gravitational wave detector located in the Kamakoka mine in Japan. To improve the accuracy of the survey, the network will be further expanded in the coming years. LIGO India will be a third twin of interferometers LIGO, will be built in India and will enter into operation in 2025 and other ground and satellite detectors are currently under construction. In addition, the detectors, since 2015 to date, have already been further refined and enhanced in their sensitivity to detect waves. In addition, on December 9th, two specific satellites were launched in orbit to trace signals of cosmic events that can produce gravitational waves, such as the fusion of two neutron stars. These are GCAM, Gravitational Wave High Energy Electromagnetic Counterpart All Sky Monitor, to twin telescopes made by the National Space Science Center of the Chinese Academy of Sciences, LIGO, Laser Interferometer Gravitational Wave Observatory, is the detector that on September 14, 2015, heard the first gravitational wave in history. LIGO is a project that involves scientists from Caltech and the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, MIT in Boston and the only phase of its construction finished in 1999. It cost $365 million and is the largest and most ambitious project ever funded by the U.S. National Science Foundation. One of its creators is the scientist Kip Thorne, who is famous among the general public for having been the scientific advisor to director Christopher Nolan during the writing of the script of the film Interstellar in 2014. Thorne was convinced that gravitational waves existed to the point of betting with Stephen Hawking on their discovery. LIGO is located in the United States and consists of two twin but separate interferometers managed as a single large observatory that monitors and processes the data of both. One facility is located in Livingston, Louisiana, the other in Hanford, Washington, over 3,000 miles away. Each interferometer is 4 kilometers long and consists of two arms arranged at right angles, in the shape of an L, inside which run laser rays that reflexes hundreds of times by a system of mirrors. The lasers travel back and forth inside high vacuum tubes, 1.2 meters in diameter, that allow measuring with very high precision the distance of the events between the two super precision mirrors on which these rays are located. The technique used is that of interferometry. The semi-transparent mirror divides the laser beam into two parts, then sent into the two arms of the interferometer to meet two other mirrors that bounce the laser. And these mirrors are the real sensors, passing through the detectors the gravitational waves disturb, even if by a very little, the journey of the laser beams. LIGO was already able to detect a variation of this distance at the threshold of one thousandth of the size of a proton. With the new updates, it even pushes up to a sensitivity 10 times higher, coming to perceive contractions or elongations of a tenth of a billion of a billionth of a meter, 10 to minus 19 meters. Virgo Virgo is a giant laser interferometer located on Italian soil, near Cascina, a town near Pisa, on the site of the European Gravitational Observatory, EGO was designed and built by a collaboration between the French Centre National de la Recherche Scientifique CNRS, and the Italian INFN. The detector has two arms, three kilometers each, and is therefore a little less sensitive than LIGO. However, since its first activation, which occurred in 2007, Virgo has been in time upgraded and updated. 
The latest update is an advanced optical system already previously installed and tested on the German-British Gravitational Science Wave Detector GEO600, which has greatly improved the sensitivity of Virgo, making it very similar to that of LIGO. As technology and upgrades progress, all gravitational detectors will be able to pick up waves from ever deeper portions of the universe, detecting gravitational wave sources from increasingly distant and ancient areas of the universe. What kind of event can produce a gravitational wave? There are various possibilities. They are all extreme cosmic events, rather rare and complex, involving different actors and radiating the universe of matter and energy. The most common is the collision of black holes or pulsars, the rotation of a neutron star and the explosion of a supernova. Moreover, even immediately after the Big Bang in the primordial moments of the universe, a good number of gravitational waves could have been generated and in the cosmos there are many other types of sources yet to be discovered. Each event produces characteristic gravitational waves which have characteristic imprint recognizable. Gravitational waves have a very wide spectrum of variability. In this way, the collaboration between detectors and telescopes, scientists and observatories installed all over the world, on the ground and in orbit becomes central to gather in a cross-analysis the messages that come to us from the cosmos. So far, the global ear has picked up signals in the cosmos in three distinct periods, during which the detectors have already picked up 67 gravitational waves in total that are still being studied. Of these, 56 were revealed in the last observation period, carried out in two operations in 2019, compared to only eight surveys during the two previous observation periods, to demonstrate that the updates on the detectors made over the years are paying off. Due to the COVID emergency, the Earth's interferometers have been turned off since last March, but the beginning of the fourth phase of surveys will see the reactivation of the Japanese interferometer Kagra, which is scheduled for 2022. Gravitational waves will greatly expand our scientific horizon. The network of terrestrial and space gravitational detectors will open a new observation window on the universe. We can also use these new objects to investigate precisely the first moments of life in the universe. If in the future we will be able to systematically combine information from electromagnetic phenomena, neutrinos, and gravitational waves, the so-called multi-messenger, in an overview we will be able in the future to have a new and detailed view of the universe in a new Galilean revolution. When Galileo invented the telescope, he opened a new sky, much wider than the Ptolemaic or Copernican conceptions. What is happening now is very similar. We need a little patience, but what is certain is that a new era for astrophysics is upon us.